It's on the strength of observation and reflection that one finds a way, so we must dig and delve unceasingly. Claude Monet was born in Paris on November 14, 1840. At the age of five, his family moved to the Normandy coast. Monet loved to roam the beach, but to a fault. He wrote of himself, I was born undisciplined. Never, even as a child, could I be made to obey a set rule. What little I know, I learned at home. School was always like a prison to me. I could never bring myself to stay there, even for four hours a day. When the sun was shining and the sea was so tempting, and it was such fun scrambling over cliffs and paddling in the shallows, such to the great despair of my parents was the unruly but healthy life I lived until I was about fourteen. Young Monet drew feverishly throughout his childhood. He became fond of painting the dock ships before they sailed out to sea, his most famous depiction titled, Ships Riding on the Seine at Rowing. At the age of 19, Monet attended the Academy of Suites for a year, and afterward the studio of Glenner. It was at this time that Claude met the people who would become the heart of the Impressionist movement. In 1870, Monet married Camille Jean-Soir, but she passed away from tuberculosis after the birth of their second son. After her death, Monet became restless and began traveling as a distraction. He found consolation in his painting, but never felt content with the results of his work. He finally settled in Giverny and started a garden to have subjects for painting at his disposal. In 1892, he remarried to Alice Hawshide. This was a very happy time in his life, as he was finally able to move on from the death of his late wife. Monet finally felt at peace and became very productive with his painting. His works were accepted by the official salon. Although he became very successful at the end of his life, Monet never felt that he had achieved the perfect conclusion of ideas that were in his mind. Monet passed away on December 6, 1926, in Giverny, France. The Age of Impressionists started in 1830 and lasted until 1841. Along with Claude Monet, the major and influential Impressionists included Monet, Renoir, Degas, Van Gogh, Pizarro, and Seurat. The Impressionist style of painting was very unconventional for their time. They rejected the narrow rules of painting that existed. Unlike the painters that followed the academic style, the Impressionists played a focus on colors and light. They used vibrant colors and painted with short and rough brush strokes to capture the essence of their subject, not the detail. The Impressionists, especially Monet, looked at nature around them for inspiration and tended to paint outdoors, which allowed them to play around with natural sunlight and hues. The standard and academic style painting before Impressionism was Romanticism and Neoclassicism. These two styles dominated European art for the late 18th and 19th centuries. Neoclassical painting followed a linear style of painting that focused on controlled, nearly invisible brushstrokes and clear, defined lines. Romanticism was slightly different, in which the brushstrokes were more visible and the outlines of the objects were less clear. Romanticism glorified and was inspired by complex concepts such as liberty, survival, ideals, hope, awe, heroism, despair, and an overall emphasis on emotion. For both neoclassicism and romanticism, history seemed the most important source for subject matter. Neoclassicism and romanticism styles were realistic and properly reflected life. We went to the Kimball Museum of Art and scheduled an interview with Katie Peroni a docent for the Impressionist exhibit. What made Impressionism so revolutionary? Well, it was something no one had ever seen before. Uh, the Impressionists were really interested in light and how it interacted with everything in the atmosphere. And so they were really focused on studying that. Um, and I think you see that more particularly in the landscapes and that sort of thing. Um, but now, when we see when we come to the exhibition that we have right now, um, I think it's more in the way they chose to play with the portrait genre. Um, but in the exhibition, you can see that a lot of those portraits, um, they're not your typical portrait. Um, some of them are, like the um, uh, Fantin Latour in the very beginning. But for example, um, Degas' uh, The Dance Class with Jules Perrault in the, um, in the middle, He's turned away from us, we can't see his face. Um, but the artist really wanted us to see these people in doing what they what they did in their daily lives rather than just giving us a likeness of them. They were looking for something more than that. Um, and then of course. 
course, we have portraits like Renoir did um, the, that was commissioned for the state that looks like a portrait that runs with the piano, but it's not a portrait. And then, of course, on the other side of the <laughs> gallery is a portrait that looks like the not portrait that's just across from it. So they played with the genre a lot. The rise of Impressionism is said to have started when a handful of painters rejected the limits of academic painting and the salon's restrictions. As many new things oftentimes are, the public's first reaction to Impressionism was not very positive. Many critics were outraged by the up-and-coming art form. Most traditional critics at the time were shocked by the bright colors and the intensity of the form. Many things we enjoy about the paintings today were frowned upon by the critics. Many considered the paintings to be vulgar and incomplete. The most elevated and successful painters had their art exhibited in the Salon. The Salon was an art show taking place in France annually but they had strict standards on work that they would accept. The salon would only accept academic style painting, smooth and visible brushwork, deep colors, and subjects that had historical and moral lessons to them. So it was not a surprise when the Impressionist art was rejected by the salon. In response, a handful of artists made alternate exhibits. One of the most popular exhibits was put together in 1863 and was named Salon de Refusé. The Impressionists went through hardships, but over time their art started to be accepted, and by the 1900s, Impressionism was part of the French culture. The public grew to love the vitality of the Impressionist technique, and in time, Impressionism became the most important movement in the history of art. Many people credit Monet as being the creator of Impressionism. While others disagree with this claim, no one can deny that he was an active leader in the popularization of the movement. Monet literally gave the name to Impressionism. In an Impressionist exhibit organized by rejected artists, Louis Leroy, a journalist and critic for a satirical magazine, wrote a famous review bashing an Impressionist exhibit. In this review, he mocked and ridiculed the art and likened Monet's painting Impression Sunrise to unfinished wallpaper. He called Monet an Impressionist because he thought his artwork looked more like an unfinished sketch rather than a completed piece. However, the sarcastic title originally meant as a term of ridicule appealed to the artist and the public alike, and the name remains to this day. In its day, Impressionism was considered to be a radical retreat from conventional methods and a loss of tradition. But looking back, we can see that Impressionism was no loss. It changed the very manner in which people thought about art. Renowned actor, writer, and architect Francesco Salvi said, Impressionism is at the root of all modern art because it was the first movement that managed to free itself from preconceived ideas and because it changed not only the way life was depicted, but the way life was seen. Monet is the artist that most embodies Impressionism. His brisk brushwork and avoidance of conventional easel painting and its restrictions were immensely influential components that modern artists all over the world have adopted from Monet's water lilies alone. Even through rejection and scathing criticisms early on, the Impressionists did not abandon the art they believed in. Claude Monet was one of the most influential leaders of the Impressionist movement. Without him, it is very possible that the movement would have never existed. We have Monet to thank for not only the beautiful and unique art style he created, but also the entire way we think about art today. Instead of rejecting new ideas and clinging desperately to traditional methods, we embrace new thoughts and concepts that help us move forward.